Hi guys, I'm Isaac and I am Shaftev and today I have a confession to make to you. It's not easy to say, but I think you all need to hear the truth. I suck. I am bad at making games. Okay, feels good to get that off my chest. I have been at this for four years now, and after two years of messing around, I made my first game and published it on the Google Play Store. And it's pretty average, um, and that's being fairly generous. It's basically what every new game dev makes, a simple platformer, no real story or point, um, just get to the end of the level and progress to the next, no puzzles, no enemies. I definitely wasn't good enough to put those kinds of things in at the time, but I knew at the core of it, it's what I needed to do to just make games. And it's also what everyone else says, and I would agree to a point. Um, I've gone to university, I've got a master's degree, a total of six years of education, and I can tell you that I've learned more doing my job in real life than I could have ever learned in the classroom. You can learn theory, but if you're not actively practicing, you're not going to be getting any better. And this translates to almost everything that you do. So even if it's bad, you have to keep making games. You need to keep creating games to get better at making games. In my opinion, it's the only way to keep going. There's a quote by radio presenter Ira Glass that talks about the gap between your taste as a person who consumes media and a creator of that media. Um, in this case, for us, it's games. Most of us get into making games because we love playing games. It's probably what sparked that passion inside of you. Um, but the games you're making don't necessarily live up to those same standards. It's your taste that leads to disappointment in yourself. And it's maybe why sometimes you feel like giving up or that it's not worth pursuing anymore. You don't feel like you can live up to those standards. But this is a totally normal process to go through. It's what I'm going through right now. And the only way to start to bridge that gap is to do a lot of work. Ira says, put yourself on a deadline so that every week or every month you will finish one story. It's only by going through a volume of work that you will close that gap and your work will be as good as your ambitions. At the start of this year, around February, I made a game for Bracky's Jam. It was a simple first person platformer collectathon Nothing impressive, uh, but I definitely phoned it in when it came to the creativity side of things. Um, I've made tons of platformers, tons of collectathons. It's the first kind of game that most people learn to make. It's the first game that I published on the Google Play Store. The theme was it's not real and I called my coins crypto. And that was how I was fitting my game into the theme and the development was mostly on the level design as the player controller came from my FPS template, which you can download from my website, chefgames.com. Most people thought that it was a pretty lazy move on my part, and the rating on that jam definitely reflected that. Um, I've since hidden the game on itch, and instead of making a devlog on that game, I made a 20 minute video essay on how shit Crypto is for game dev, which also did very poorly. So all around a big L at the start of the year. I felt as if I was in a bit of a spiral at that point. I had reached a point in my game dev journey where my coding skills aren't really a barrier anymore. And that's not to say that I'm an expert in any way, cause I'm definitely not. Um, I just know enough to do almost anything that I want. And there's a big enough community around game dev and Gitto. So if I don't know how to do something, I'm only one YouTube video or devlog away from being able to find out. So now the only barrier is being able to actually make a game, or as I joked on stream last week, draw the rest of the owl. The excuse used to be, if only I knew how to code that mechanic, then I would be able to make a great game. And now it's, how do I make a great game? 
like I said before, the only way through this gap between what you like and what you want to make is by making more stuff. I joined a new game jam, this time just going through and cherry picking a theme that inspired me. I landed on one with the theme Stronger Together, which inspired me to make a friend finder game. This is where I really got stuck. I had no issues getting the game up and running, finding friends and taking them to the location to win the level. Um, this is where I ran into trouble though. I couldn't figure out how to make the game fun and engaging. There was maybe three combinations that I could think of and three levels isn't really much fun. So I gave up and it sucks and I feel bad about giving up, but I just couldn't crack it. I couldn't find the fun and I took a bit of a break. Uh, it might have been the first time I've truly doubted the path that I was on. Um, I've always known that in my early days it was going to be hard to make a game, but I never thought it would be the design side of game development. I had sort of assumed that once I was good enough at the technical side of things, the design would come naturally. I think most gamers would assume that because they like games so much, designing a game would be pretty easy. You hear this kind of thing all the time in the comments of a YouTube video. So I spent a bit of time reflecting. I wasn't sure if my assumptions about what I needed to do were correct. Um, I don't have any formal education in this field, but from other experiences, like I said before, education isn't always the answer, especially for creative things like this. You can't teach someone how to be creative. Um, I took a look at some books, watched a few videos, but at the end of the day, I came back to the exact same conclusion as before. When I first started this journey, I needed to make more games and I still need to keep making more games. Around 2016 to 2018, I got really into making music. I was determined to write an album. I've been playing guitar a lot longer than I've been making games and as a part of that two year process, I wrote a new song almost every time I was sitting down to play. I was always jamming out something new. And this is because I knew that the only way to create music is to just take the pressure out of it and see what you can come up with. You do as much as you can for as long as you can and then you come back and you pick out the best bits and turn them into something more fleshed out. The key aspect of this stage is that it doesn't have to be good. I've got plenty of 30 second riffs sitting on my computer that will never see the light of day. But by creating those, I also made other bits that I really liked. I was able to turn them into something much more substantial. And this is exactly what I think I need to be doing for my game development. I need to be constantly trying to make something new without the pressure of it having to be good every time. So for the next game, I decided to take some of this inspiration even further. I took the player controller I had for the jam I quit. I modified the gameplay to be something a little different and to suit the theme. Um, instead of finding friends, you needed to use colors to activate a doorway. So something simple that I should be able to make some levels around. And the challenge was after setting this up, no coding, no more features, just level design. Make a level or two every day until the jam ends, keep the assets simple, keep the rules of the game simple, and don't worry too much if it's good or not, just focus on creating. And I'm pretty happy with how things went, to be honest. Um, it's not the best game and it didn't even rank well, but I got valuable experience in designing the game and you know, it certainly has its flaws, but I was successful in that challenge at least. And I'm happy with that. I think I ended up with 17 levels, which is way more than I've put into any other jam. And that's what I think I need to keep doing. Keep creating, keep growing that game design muscle so that when I'm ready to make something more commercial, it will have a chance of actually being good. I know a lot of game dev YouTubers don't always talk about these kinds of challenges. Everyone's always talking about making their dream game and building hype for their release. 
Um, I don't have anything against people that do this, by the way, but I also feel it's necessary to talk about the difficulties and the challenges that surround the, you know, hobbyist indie dev space. Um, it's likely that we all have different backgrounds from game development. Um, a lot of us don't have a formal education in this field and we just have a passion, you know, we're sharing tips and tricks on how we can be the best that we can be to fulfill our dreams and passions. But I hate the idea of pretending that it's easy because it's not. If you're struggling like me, uh, don't worry. Uh, it's gonna suck sometimes or a lot of the time. You're gonna have highs and you're gonna have lows and it's gonna be a long journey. But eventually we'll get to a place where we wanna be. The most important thing is that we keep going and we don't give up. That's all this week. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, leave a like if you did, maybe comment down below on your experiences. If you haven't already, uh, maybe consider subscribing. And if you're feeling extra generous, maybe you can check out that failure of a video essay I made on crypto and game development. All right, I am Isaac, I am Shaftev, and I'll see you next time.